You have to go back to 1984 when an English manager last won the European Cup. Since the Premier League was created in 1992, no English manager has ever won the competition. For me, to be considered a world-class coach, you have to win the biggest trophies. So in the modern era, why can other nations produce managers like Pep, Wenger or Mourinho, and instead our best products are Eddie Howe or Graham Potter? How can a country that made the beautiful game not have produced a world-class manager for so long? To really get to the bottom of this, we have to go back. We've all heard of the very best English managers. Sir Alf Ramsey won England its only World Cup in 1966. Brian Clough won back-to-back -back European Cups with Nottingham Forest. Bob Paisley won six first divisions and three European Cups with Liverpool between an eight-year period. And Sir Bobby Robson was one of the only English managers to have success overseas. You'll notice that all of these great managers and their achievements took place in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. And since Robson, England has failed to produce another manager of that ilk. But why? It's evident in the last 20 years, football has evolved and advanced dramatically from a tactical and technical point of view. This graph highlights how in today's game, tactics are so varied, we can't even define the era with a set formation. The coaches I've mentioned came from eras where they were judged by how good of a leader they were, rather than their tactical intelligence. You, you, in the main, you have to convince players that they are good players, brilliant players, outstanding players, international players, if you like. The argument that these managers did nothing tactically and just motivated players is wrong. Sir Bobby Robson has had a huge impact on many successful coaches coaches we see today. However, teams, especially in England, where the majority of these coaches managed, played a very similar style, 4-4-2 and direct. Everything we did was very, very simple. We never tried anything difficult. And because of this, modern English coaches have been left without a real tactical philosophy to follow. And if you consider 4-4-2 and going direct one, then you're clearly out of date for today's game. What I'm suggesting is, England has never had a philosophy of how to play football. The coaches I've mentioned have had huge success because of their incredible leadership and management, not from an advanced style of play. This has meant that the modern English coach doesn't really have a blueprint to follow, whereas other managers from other nations do. For example, if you look at the European international sides, the Netherlands and Spain are known for their total football. It's Italy is known for its highly defensive but highly successful Catanaccio. France is known for its quick, athletic and easy on the eye style of play. And England, it doesn't have one. As I've mentioned, no English manager has ever won the Premier League. In fact, the last English manager to win England's top league was the year before the Premier League was created, Howard Wilkinson with Leeds. And that's no coincidence. The United Kingdom, never mind just England, is the least bilingual European nation. It's not just by chance that since the Premier League began, when more money started being generated by English clubs, who then poached Europe's top talents, and squads became incredibly cosmopolitan, there was a direct correlation with English coaches not winning the league. The foreign influx of players has meant English managers have found it extremely challenging to communicate with and manage their squad. The best English managers were from a time when most of the squad would be made up of English-speaking players, making it far easier for them to manage the team, both individually and collectively. Don't let my earlier point around the tactical advancements in the game shadow how important man management is. It was huge back then, and it's as important now. You might ask how the Scottish, but English-speaking Sir Alex Ferguson did so well with foreign talent and won 13 Premier Leagues. While many ex-United players have spoken about how the English-speaking players ran the dressing room, and dictated the mood of the players towards Ferguson. How many times do you think he came into our change room? No idea. You wouldn't feel one hand? Really? No, never came in the change room. Because he, he knew that the culture was set and then he had lieutenants like me, Giggsy, Gary Neville, etc., who were then filtering that down Mm. to any of the younger players on the new signs. See, I'm not saying English managers have to learn five languages to be a success. You can just be smart. So Bobby Robson, who only spoke English, did amazingly in the Netherlands, Portugal and Spain because he wasn't just a great coach, but he was also brilliant with people, smart with people. He was known for being adaptable, open to change, and this open-mindedness was what set him apart, something that modern English coaches haven't been too good at. He gave a young Jose Mourinho a chance to work with him, and we all know how that then played out. These soft skills of being adaptable, smart and compassionate go along way in football and many modern English coaches haven't realised that yet but some have. Eddie Howe is currently doing very well with Newcastle. He inherited and has added to a core of English players who he clearly values both on the pitch and off it. As they set the mood of the dressing room so the players with the stardust like the Brazilian Grimarez who speaks little English follow along. This is a clear example of clever coaching. The English Sir Bobby Robson and the Scottish Sir Alex Ferguson have shown you don't need to know loads of languages to have success. However whilst it may seem trivial I think the lack of bilingual English managers is the biggest 
biggest factor at play. This point is strengthened when you realise that there are no English managers in Europe's other top four leagues, other than the English-Belgian-born Will Still. A huge part of his success so far is the fact that he speaks French, and I'd argue if he wasn't able to do so, no one would have heard of him. That's how big a part I think it plays. Learning a language also means learning a culture, and that means you understand what different nationalities respect, value, and appreciate. Essentially, it makes you more rounded. You could also look at it like this. If you only speak English, you really only have 20 top flight teams you can go to. But if you learnt Spanish, for example, you'd have 40 top flight teams you could manage at. English managers should really focus on learning other languages, or just be very smart. I think there's also an issue of how English coaches are perceived. English managers just aren't seen as sexy. But why? Well, when a team sacks a manager in the Premier League, they usually go for someone like Sam Allardyce. This makes sense because he's proven and viewed as dependable. But as seen with West Brom and now Leeds, is that really the case anymore? Imagine if Leeds went and got Michael Carrick, who's worked wonders with Middlesbrough. You never know, they might have stayed up. I understand the gravity of the situation when a club is fighting relegation. You need stability and something safe. But I also think you need something that'll excite the fans and galvanise them. The safe option doesn't doesn't always work out. Yes, throwing, for example, Michael Carrick into that situation might not have solved it, but what if it did? Even if he got relegated, at least you have a young, exciting coach leading you into a season in the championship. The point is, clubs are hiring the wrong English coaches, so the stereotype that's been created by managers like Steve Bruce, Roy Hodgson, and Sam Allardyce can't be changed unless clubs change who they're hiring. You only have to scratch below the surface to realise that England are producing young, exciting coaches. But if English clubs keep giving opportunities to those who no longer deserve them, What's the point in even having them? You only have to look at other nations to see how to do it right. Here's how many times since the Premier League began 31 years ago, each league has been won by a manager from the respective nation. The Italian Serie A has been won by an Italian manager 27 times. Just to remind you, the Premier League has been won zero times by an English manager. Why is that happening? Well, because these managers have been afforded the chance to gain experience in their nation's respective top league. At the start of the 2022-23 season, here's how many managers who are the same nationality as the league they were in. The Italian Serie A had 15 Italian managers, whereas England just had four English managers in the Premier League. Other nations are putting promising, exciting and inexperienced coaches into jobs in their top league. This allows them to make mistakes, have success, learn and grow, meaning when they get the chance to manage a world-class club, they are world-class themselves. So very few English clubs are hiring English managers into Premier League jobs, and when they do, it's not the right ones. The perception of English coaches isn't helped by the English media. In all aspects of public life, the English press is one of the most intense and ruthless groups of media in the world. This kind of goes back to the fact the UK is the least bilingual country in Europe. Known as the island mentality, England sometimes focuses on just itself. This leads to the English media really turning on their own, none more so than in football. We've seen it with players countless times, and it's also the case with managers. Because of how intense the English media is, it's meant that when any English manager has been given the chance, especially at a top club, any mistake or misstep is highlighted and magnified for the country to see. An example of this is Graham Potter when he became Chelsea manager. Obviously his spell in charge went pretty awfully and the English media were there to showcase any mistakes he made on the pitch. But the English media's, let's call it, odd behaviour was really highlighted with the stuff off the pitch. Do you remember the bizarre obsession the English media had with Graham Potter's appearance? Yes, he did become remarkably better looking, but it was weird wasn't it? The media, who should have been fascinated with how Chelsea had changed tactically, were more interested in how Potter had gone from a grade 8 to a grade 2 on the sides. There were also questions about if he was too nice. Granted, the question is a valid one to ask and arguably he was. But I want you to ask yourself the question. If Graham Potter was Spanish, would he have faced the same questions? I don't think he would have. My final thought on all of this though, is do we really need a world-class English manager? Yes, it would be nice to have at least two or three English coaches who are considered elite, but the only reason the masses of English people would really care about having a world-class English manager is if they are in charge of the national team. As long as their respective club is performing well, it doesn't really matter if the coach is English or not. Maybe that's the point. We in England don't have the need to develop our coaches into world-class managers when other nations do, because we have the money to go and get everyone else's.